What would it be like to be Peter Pan? Wait, Peter Pan? Come on, D. Grant. Surely you've got a better character you would rather imagine as being. Stick with me, because we're going to talk about the power of imagination, and that's really the realm of Peter Pan, The Lost Boys, and Never Never Land. I've got some great stuff to share with you today, and I invite you to join me in this exploration of our creative capacities, our processes, and the beauty that it is to be alive and the beauty that it is to be imaginative. Welcome to you. My name is D. Grant Smith. I am the growth farmer for personal development through the lens of storytelling and spirituality. Here on this channel, we talk about the journey of becoming the best version of ourselves, living our dreams, self-love, healing, manifestation, imagination, and a whole lot more. If you want more from me, including some awesome and inspiring short fiction lessons, insights, teachings, and more, I encourage you to visit growthfarming.com. I put a link in the description below. All right, with that, let's jump right on into the subject. Remember the movie Hook? Came out in 1997, I believe. Uh, no, it came out way before then. I think 1994. Anyhow, it starred Robin Williams as the legendary Peter Pan and Dustin Hoffman as Captain Hook. In that story, a grown-up and adult version of Peter Pan lives in not London, but he goes back to London to revisit Wendy. And Peter Pan has gotten married, he's had kids, and he has forgotten that he's Peter Pan. And it's not until Captain Hook comes and kidnaps his own children that he goes to Never Never Land to attempt to rescue them. And while he's in Never Never Land, he meets Rufio, the now version of Peter Pan that can do just about everything that Peter Pan could do except fly. But one of the big things that came from that movie was this word, bangerang. Now, I'm still not exactly sure what bangerang means, but when the Lost Boys get really fired up, they start shouting this word. And so I have this message to share with you today about how to use the bangerang of imagination, faith, and manifestation. So, spiritual and mystical teachers, scientists, and personal development folks are, interestingly, bringing the same subject of conscious creation to the forefront of everything that we're hearing about nowadays, which I think is pretty interesting, especially to note that the subject of manifestation, conscious creation, and self-concept have been a part of our experience, whether we realize it or not. And if you, chances are you are, a fan or reader of any of these folks like Abraham Hicks, Neville Goddard, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Dr. Wayne Dyer, and a whole lot of other people, then you know exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Through the power of imagination, all things come into being. And while this may seem a little unreal, it's actually fiction and film in a strange way that can help us understand these metaphysical and spiritual truths on a deeper level. So let's dig into the soil of the subject of conscious creation. One of my favorite things, as you very well know, is to write fictional stories and short novels that reveal hidden spiritual truths and personal nuggets of personal growth and wisdom. Now, if you haven't experienced any of my stories, I invite you to do that. You can do that by visiting the Stories tab at growthfarming.com. If you have the eyes to see, these jewels of insight will come up to the surface for you to utilize in your own spiritual and personal growth journey as you read my stories. I also enjoy seeing illustrations of metaphysical and mystical teachings in movies and TV shows. I've got several videos here on this channel that illustrate just that. When we were kids, our imaginations are revved up all the time, 24-7, without us even trying, because children live from the world of imagination. Childhood is also when our brains are operating out of the theta state, where the subconscious is a sponge, just absorbing everything. And we're being impressed with all sorts of information, ideas, beliefs, and concepts. Kids believe that all things are possible because the imagination is where their reality stays. 
Then what happens? We grow up and we start taking on a different way of thinking and believing. We learn in school and religion and culture and society that imagination is for being a kid. Imagination is for children and we need to be reasonable, logical, and realistic. What piece of technology was realistic when it was first introduced? Think about that for just a second. All of us are using these little guys all the time. Now, I have an iPhone. It doesn't matter whether you have an Android or a Google phone or whoever the hell it is that makes these things other than Apple and uh, those folks. But we're all using smartphones. What do smartphones have? Well, they have cameras and they have zillions of apps that do just about everything. And they have texting capabilities and abilities for us to have video face conferencing with just about anybody in the planet. What we use the phone for is not what phones were actually used even 30 years ago. Phone was used to do this and talk to people, but how many of us actually use our phones to talk? It's a mind-blowing concept if you think about it. The iPhone, Samsung, Google phone that we know now was once a concept in the imagination of a few, a few people. Not that very long ago. It was, a, it was a concept in the imagination before it ever became a tangible thing. So that's just one example of how imagination is the creative force of existence. Once again, let's go back to the film Hook that came out in 1991. Sorry for the date being off. Starring Robin Williams, Dustin Hoffman, and a whole bunch of other cool people. It was a really wonderful film. If you haven't seen it, Go check it out. I believe it's at, um, I know it's on Prime, HBO Max probably as well. But it was directed, interestingly enough, by Steven Spielberg. Spielberg's obviously one of the best directors of all time. There are a lot of really powerful spiritual and personal development jewels in this movie. Too many for me to point out in just one video. So I'm going to just keep it to the basics and keep it simple. But my encouragement for you is to go check out this movie for yourself and see if you see what I see, or maybe you see something different. And if you do, come back to this video, leave a comment, and let me know. Let me catch you up just a little bit on the plot so we can really dive into the meat and potatoes of this thing. So, once again, in the film, Peter, again played by Robin Williams, is a grown-up man. He's in his probably mid to late 30s. He's got a wife and two kids. And... As of late, when the movie starts, he hasn't really been showing up that much for his children. Or I would imagine not that much for his wife either. He has been showing up almost exclusively for his job, which is basically where he lives and where he thinks he has all of this power. But at the beginning of the movie, or relatively close to that, he goes back to London to visit Wendy. Now, at this point, Wendy is a very old woman. Actually, Peter married Wendy's granddaughter, Mora. And when he goes back to visit, he sees a couple people that he hasn't seen in a long time. And Mora and Wendy and Peter go to this honorary event for Wendy. But while they're gone, Captain Hook comes and steals Peter Pan's kids. Why? Because he wants his last war. And the only way he can figure to get Peter to come back and fight him and him be the victor is if he takes what is most precious to him, his children. So, one thing about Peter that we learn early on in this story is that he does something, he has a pattern that is true for many, if not all of us adults. He places his values on his job and career over his family. He forgets his youth and he relies on, this is the big one, he relies on his logic and his reason to determine what it is what is real and what isn't in life. Essentially, he loses his heart because imagination and heart are intricately intertwined. Captain Hook finds him, kidnaps his kids, holds them as ransom to enact his revenge. Peter then must return to Neverland to rescue his kids and face off against his nemesis in a battle to the death. So here's where the imagination stuff is really revealed. As Peter trains he gets three days of training which is not very long if you're thinking about going from being a business lawyer to being a sword wielding 
pirate fighter. Uh, as he's in this training, the Lost Boys are trying to remind him of who he really is. That he's really not this grown-up adult person that has no access to his imagination or creativity or fun. So after a grueling day of exercise and training, they all sit down for this big feast and the boys are grabbing at these steaming plates and taking bites out of food. But when Peter looks at that, all he sees are empty plates, empty spoons, and them grabbing at nothing. It's not real, is what he says to them. Peter looks around and he keeps asking, where is the real food? I'm starving. What are you guys actually eating? And it's not until Rufio, once again, the new leader of the Lost Boys, gets Peter to change his state of consciousness by mocking him and getting into a battle of insults and think like a kid again that Peter, his eyes finally open up and he's able to see the bountiful feast that is all around him. It's in this moment where he is able to become a kid again. And Bangarang, saying that all the Lost Boys use, Bangarang himself back into Peter Pan form. Here's the thing. Imagination's power is in being like a child. The more time we spend trying to figure things out using our logic and our reason, the more we are going to spin our wheels. Here's something that Neville Goddard said in his book, Your Faith is Your Fortune from 1941. He said, quote, when this belief is so firmly established that you feel confident of results, your desire will embody itself. How it will be done, no man knows. I, your desire, have ways you know not of. And that's a quote from John 432. And that's the end quote on that statement from Neville Goddard. Here's the thing. The logical, rational mind will always, always look for evidence in our outer world before it believes in anything's existence. That's why faith is what it takes to make the unseen seen. The illustration of that scene from Hook is a beautiful representation of that. It requires us to be like a child. Children believe that all things are possible because they understand the power of imagination. And they use their imagination all the time. I presently am returning to a place of consciousness where imagination is more prominent than reason or logic. And if you are interested in creating the life of your dreams and you recognize the power of imagination, that's something that you will be doing as well if you're not already doing it. Because imagination is the key to conscious creation. It's a place where more fun happens, where every day gets to be an adventure. This place has given birth to more creative writing, more amazing stories, and more enjoyable experiences in my own journey. It's also helped me to change my self-concept and rewrite my story, to live life in a more loving, free, and wonderful way. I encourage you, my friend, to bring imagination back into your day-to-day -day experience and expression and see how magical it really is. Let me know by commenting below what you discover about yourself the more that you explore imagination. How are you using imagination to have more fun? And if you haven't jumped on board yet, leave a comment below that says, D. Grant, I'm on board. Imagination Station is where I'm at. I will meet your energy in this place. And if you want to explore more of what it means to bring some fun and enjoyment into your spiritual and personal growth journey, then I invite you to check out my free ebook titled Why So Serious. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. I appreciate you very much. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, please give this a thumbs up and subscribe. That helps all the algorithm stuff to do its magic and help this video and my other videos get shared and seen by more people. And I appreciate your help in this process. I also appreciate you being a part of this community. It helps me be able to serve more people in a greater capacity. As always, to you, my friend, I appreciate you. Please come back again for more. I love you. I believe in you. And I'll see you soon.